The Essential Education Projector Range from Hitachi sponsors ICT programs. Hello and welcome to a Resource Review ICT Special. If you're looking for ICT resources to enhance your primary science lessons, then look no further, because today on Resource Review, we're going to be evaluating three that you might want to consider. They are a concept cartoon CD, a writing support and multimedia tool, and a science questions and answers website. Recommending today's resources is Anne Oliver, Anne is primary PGCE science tutor at the University of East Anglia. Joining Anne on the panel today is Year 4 coordinator Rachel Dixon from Ripple Junior School in Barking, Essex. And we also have Ray Barker, director of the British Educational Suppliers Association. And over in the test lab, Matthew Tosh, our resident ICT investigator, will be putting the resources through their paces. So Anne, your first choice of resource for us today is the concept cartoon CD-ROM. Explain this one to us. Right, um, well, the CD-ROM, which is entitled Concept Cartoons, is very useful for assessing science and for identifying misconceptions that children might have to use as starting points for teaching. OK, so quite multi-purpose. Mm. What do you actually get? What's on it? This is one of my favourites. Um, it's about looking at thermal conduction and one of the things that um, children will quite readily say is if you put a, a coat on a snowman that it will melt. So using this resource teacher can, the teacher can kind of work out those kind of misconceptions? They can work out where they're actually at, where their thinking is. I like the way it enables children to come up with ideas without feeling it's a right wrong culture of assessment. Okay well thank you very much Anne. Let's go over to Matthew now to see a bit more of Concept Cartoon CD. <laughs> Over a hundred cartoons on a CD-ROM. I thought, great, I'll do that. Then they told me it was concept cartoons. I should have known better. But if we have a look at the resource, though, you'll see it's divided into a series of conceptual chapters. And here they appear on the left. And you just move your pointer over the top of each one, and you can see on the screen what each one is about. Now, if I click on one of them, we can see the kind of slides that correspond to that chapter. And again, at the very bottom, we've got our numbers, and you can see what each slide is. Now, I do think this is a little bit of a slow way of navigating around the CD-ROM to find a cartoon to use. So I just want to show you the index. You can jump to topics really easily. And when you click on one, you can see the slides that correspond to that topic on the right hand side. So we'll click on to Snowman. This is our first cartoon. You can see the picture appears. It's really clear to see. And speech bubbles come up. One of them is completed already, just to get you thinking about the topic. The others are blank. And you can bring up what those other characters are saying by clicking on them, like that. And if you're using an interactive whiteboard, you could always leave them clear and actually get pupils to write ideas in. So we'll get the last answer up. The thing about a concept cartoon is it won't allude to the right or wrong answer. It's designed to promote discussion. But if you're getting a bit perplexed yourself, then you can always click on the textbook icon in the bottom left-hand corner. This gives you information about the topic you're looking at, so it can avoid those embarrassing moments. There's a lot of information here for teachers. So if you're unsure on your science, it's well worth checking out beforehand. You'll notice there are some arrows on the bottom right-hand corner, and this allows you to cycle through some of the slides in that particular topic. They're great for use on an interactive whiteboard, but if you don't have that luxury, there's absolutely nothing stopping you from right-clicking on the picture and selecting print from the menu. You could then print it out as handouts to use on notice boards, or take it along to a staff room to colour in during a meeting. There's plenty of scope for its use. Now, if you're really keen to find out about the philosophies behind concept cartoons, then the first five sections on the CD-ROM give you plenty of information. So there's plenty to be going on with there. Personally, I prefer all the colourful pictures. And on that note, I'm going to check out my chemistry. Well, Sue, Matthew showed us some of the teacher support that's available on the CD. Yeah. How much work would a teacher really have to put in to get the most out of that resource? With any t uh, resource or topic that um, teachers are involved in, there will be some aspects that they feel more confident with than others. So it's a very difficult question to put a quantity on. Mm. But, but for I the think quite easily, teacher, would you say it's quite accessible to them? Yes, I do, because also the nature of um, the format 
means that different views can be put forward. So it isn't looking for a right answer, it's looking for a debate on that issue. OK, well, over now to Rachel, who's actually used the resource in her classroom. How did it go down? Um, it's great. I have used this quite a lot within the classroom and uh, the children do love it. I'll just show you um, one that we did actually use within the classroom in our recent topic. We're doing plants mm -hmm. and um, we looked at this seeds in the dark one. Now, because we have used this quite a lot in the classroom, what um, I particularly like about these characters is that you get the same characters following through in all of the concept cartoons. It doesn't have every cartoon for every lesson, um, but you wouldn't want it to because um, it would get boring. Ray, what do you think? I think it's great value for money, really, in terms of the fact that it encourages talk, and there isn't enough talk. I know we're trying to shut kids up a lot of the time, but I think <laughs> in science particularly, where it's a, it's a kind of non-specialist subject, mostly for teachers, you might be a bit nervous about it, to get the kids to investigate what's going on, and you know, the teacher having the facts so that they're not really caught out. I think mm -hmm. that's really, really, really good. Well, Anne, it's time now to move on to your second choice of resource. This is called Clicker 5. Explain this one to us. Well, Clicker 5 can be used across all areas of the curriculum, not just science. But I particularly like it for science because you can build up a word bank. The word bank we've got here um, looks at a certain aspect of science um, that was written after a walk that the children did. Um, they can either fill in these words in the word bank and then to just click on one and it comes up. And if they want to, um, to build it into their... Um, writing. So if you're looking at predator and prey, for example, very young children might get hung up on writing. And I, I've got a real problem with an emphasis being put on literacy in a science lesson. I want the children to think about the science words and science content. So this is a tool to help them actually focus on the content. OK, well, thank you very much. Right. Let's go back to Matthew to get more of a tour of Clicker Fun. <laughs> Clicker is a multimedia tool which allows you to write with words, phrases and pictures. It can help you structure your sentences, for example, if you're trying to write the results of an experiment. Now, the view we've got on the screen at the moment is the one where it works as a normal word processor and you can type in words. But when you press the full stop button, the program reads your words. It reads out what you've typed. Now, there's a little bit more to it than this because you can use this special phrase bank at the bottom and we've just got a very simple one on here to, to show what, how it works. And I can click on each phrase like that, the boy builds a model, and you can read out everything on the screen just by clicking on the speech bubble. The programme reads your words. The boy builds a model. So it's good for, for writing things like that. Now, there is another dimension to it because there's an Explorer feature here. And it works a little bit like Windows Explorer. You can sort of search around on the CD for other resources. So as we're on a science programme, we'll have a look at some frogs. Now, this resource here has been created with the Clicker programme itself. So you can see some of the things that you can do with the software. We've imported some pictures. We've got some text boxes. And there's even the reading out function. The frogs lay eggs, called frog spawn in the water. On this next slide, they've imported some video as well. So you can see uh, frogs mating busily there in the spring. Another resource I found is this one here. It's another sciencey one. It allows you to name animal names. And I can just click on the box like that and insert the name of an animal. But if you look, I can actually put any old name in. The downside with this is it doesn't allow you to check your answers, but you can print them out and things and uh, maybe hand it into a teacher. Now, don't worry, if you're sat at home thinking, I'm gonna have no time to be able to put resources together using this software, there is plenty on the CD and there's a website that offers support. And if we just have a quick look, you can see there's lots of resources here for all the different aspects of science, indeed all subjects across the curriculum, and they're free to download. And that concludes our tour of Clicker 5. Watching Matthew there, I felt that perhaps some of the, the ways that you control Clicker weren't particularly intuitive. I mean, how, how much effort is it going to be for teachers to get to grips with it? It, it is a programme that demands a bit of time spent on it to find out, you know, all the possibilities. And it can be used very simply or it can be used in a more complicated way. Well, Rachel, how, what did you think of it? It's not an intuitive programme. Um, it does, it's a programme that needs to be inset-led. Um, the word bank was great. We used, um, we created gap fillers, which again you can lead to assessment of their children's knowledge. 
Um, it is a great tool. The speech is okay. It's not. Um, it doesn't model good no, patterns so of speech, so it, you do need to be a bit careful with that. Ray, I mean, do you, do you would you recommend teachers bother to get to grips with this? Oh, absolutely. I mean, teachers are passionate about it, actually. I mean, it's one of the you know the the best selling programs for special needs. It was devised as a special needs um, product. And, and for primary science? Uh, well, I can see its use in primary science. It's not a particular piece of software, a tool designed specifically for primary science, but as with most of the primary curriculum, um, you know, once you have it in your school, there's lots of other things that you can use through the clicker machine. Well, Anne, it's time now to move on to your third choice of resource. This is a website called Ask Dr Universe. Mm -hmm. Explain it to us. Well, Dr Universe is um, a website that children can access easily enough to ask questions that they want to ask that might be considered silly if you like, like, I don't know, why do ducks have bright shiny feathers on their heads? So for example, if they just put in ducks and go to search, then it will come up with questions that have been asked about ducks beforehand. So, And, and how does the site generate the answers? I mean, are there real people? Uh, replying to the people's um, online, or the, is it just the blurb the actually says that it comes from university-based research, and so, so the, they're not getting an instant answer no, to a new it, question. No, it could take a while, and there is an when you overload. Say a while, two or three days. Right. Okay. Yes, but it, it's global; it's worldwide. So there might be questions on there from any country in the world. All right. Yeah, thank you. Well, um, over here, how did it go down in your classroom? I do find that this website is a victim of its own success, really. Um, because it is a fantastic website, questions are hugely important to promote inquiry, whether it's in science or, or any topic yeah. really. Um, but we submitted a question and we still haven't heard <laughs> back. Um, so it, it does take a while and children, it, I mean it was great because it promoted independent learning. Children went home, they logged on, they said, oh I've asked this question today and they love to try and trick Dr Universe. So it actually <laughs> extends their own thinking because they're trying to come up with quite complex things. Um, but they still haven't heard back from their questions, so they were, they've were they been slightly demotivated by that. So, what do you think of Dutch You love the idea of questions, it's the answers that bother me. I mean, they go on for about 15 screens. <laughs> and, they, um, they aren't always and um, actually for the level of no. the yeah. 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 your teacher. Yeah. Well, I can't see seven-year-olds reading it, personally. Who's it best for? Really, the teachers? <laughs> well, it depends, because, as you say, they were really keen to ask questions, mm. so for that point alone I would recommend it yeah. and then the teacher works with them with the answers but, but I agree with what you're saying yeah. but it's the best um, uh, website that I've found for children actually being able to ask their own questions. Good to I think questions. it's the same with any resource that we use it's how it's used that's important okay. not, yeah, just, right. not just how it's why. Used and the teacher's creativity yes. In the yes. Okay. Well thank you all very much that's all we've got time for but just to recap the three resources that we looked at today were Concept Cartoon CD-ROM from Millgate Publishing and Consultancy Limited. Clicker 5 from Crick Software Limited. And Dr Universe from Washington State University. For more information about all of the resources we talked about, go to our website. It's teachers.tv forward slash resource review. Or if you want to, email us, resource review at teachers.tv. Big thank you to the panel, to Anne, to Ray and to Rachel. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye. Essential Education Projectors from Hitachi sponsor ICT programs.